Where am I? Good morning and a very happy Christmas to you. I'm Judith Lay and it's my pleasure to welcome you to a praise special, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ in words and music. Jesus, the Son of God, born in a stable, is by any standard an extraordinary story. And the people who were caught up in it, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the wise men, were all amazed at God sending his son as a helpless baby born to a young girl in an obscure village. But even more amazing is that this Jesus, whose birth is at the heart of our celebrations, longs to spend this day and every day with us. And the gifts he offers us cost nothing and last forever. Their peace, love, hope and new life in him. Not just fleeting feelings, but inner strengths that will carry us through wherever life takes us. This morning I invite you to listen again to the story of the birth of Jesus as it's recorded in the Bible and told through our carols and sacred music. David Suchet reads from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah and the Gospels of Luke and Matthew. And Anne Clark joins us with a selection of poetry that looks at the birth of Jesus from the viewpoint of those who were there, even the animals in the stable. We start with a very popular carol, after which David Suchet reads from the prophet Isaiah, who lived around 700 years before the birth of Jesus. And yet he wrote about the coming of a saviour, a peacemaker, a king whose kingdom would never end. The composer Handel used some of Isaiah's words in his great work, The Messiah, For unto us a child is born, and we'll hear that too before we move into the Gospels as they tell the story of the birth of Christ.
Isaiah chapter 9 The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and for ever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
Isaiah chapter 11 A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash round his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who, from the first, were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth 
your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them.
My baby, my burden, tomorrow the morn I shall go lighter and you will be born. I shall go lighter, but heavier too, for seeing the burden that falls upon you. The burden of love, the burden of pain. I'll see you bear both among men once again. Tomorrow you'll bear it, your burden, alone. Tonight you've no burden that is not my own. My baby, my burden, tomorrow the morn I shall go lighter and you will be born. This was the moment when before turned into after, and the future's uninvented timekeepers presented arms. This was the moment when nothing happened. Only dull peace sprawled boringly over the earth. This was the moment when even energetic Romans could find nothing better to do than counting heads in remote provinces. And this was the moment when a few farm workers and three members of an obscure Persian sect walked haphazard, by starlight, straight into the kingdom of heaven.
and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Kings came riding, one, two and three, over the desert and over the sea, one in a ship with a silver mast. The fisherman wondered as he went past, one on a horse with a saddle of gold, 
the children came running to behold. One came walking over the sand with a casket of treasure held in his hand. All the people said, Where go they? But the kings went forward all through the day. Night came on as those kings went by. They shone like the gleaming stars in the sky. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt where he stayed until the death of Herod. Who's that knocking at the window? Who's that standing at the door? What are all those presents lying on the kitchen floor? Who is the smiling stranger with hair as white as gin? What is he doing with the children? And who could have let him in? Why has he rubies on his fingers, a cold, cold crown on his head? Why, when he caws his carol, does the salty snow run red? Why does he ferry my fireside as a spider on a thread, his fingers made of fuses and his tongue of gingerbread? Why does the world before him melt in a million suns? Why do his yellow yearning eyes burn like saffron buns? Watch where he comes walking out of the Christmas flame. Dancing, double talking, Herod is his name.
A Christmas Carol by Christina Rossetti In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow has fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow, in the bleak midwinter long ago. Our God, heaven cannot hold him nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter a stable place suffice the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Enough for him whom cherubim worship night and day, a breast full of milk and a manger full of hay. Enough for him whom angels fall down before, the ox and ass and camel which adore. Angels and archangels may have gathered there, cherubim and seraphim thronged the air, but only his mother in her maiden bliss worshipped the beloved with a kiss. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him, give my heart. We've heard the birth of Jesus foretold by Isaiah some 700 years before it actually happened. We've shared in Mary's unquestioning obedience to God's plan, the shepherds surprised by angels and wise men following a star to find the promised saviour. Anne Clark has two more poems now about the animals in this story. The first, by Thomas Hardy, relates to a West Country legend that on hearing the church bells ringing for midnight mass on Christmas Eve, all farm animals would kneel in honour of the anniversary of Christ's birth. The second is by a very wise donkey. And the Manx carol that follows is by Kurjin Kujak, Trevor Ruggit Christ, when Christ was born, the message of the angels to the world about the birth of Jesus. Christmas Eve and twelve of the clock. Now they are all on their knees, an elder said, as we sat in a flock by the embers in fireside ease. We pictured the meek, mild creatures where they dwell in their strawy pen, nor did it occur to one of us there to doubt they were kneeling then. So fair a fancy few would weave in these years, yet I feel if someone said, On Christmas Eve, come, See the oxen kneel in the lonely barton by yonder coomb our childhood used to know. I should go with him in the gloom, hoping it might be so.
No room at the inn, of course. And not that much in the stable, what with the shepherds, the magi, Mary, Joseph, the heavenly host, not to mention the baby, using our manger as a cot. You couldn't have squeezed another cherub in for love or money. Still, in spite of the overcrowding, I did my best to make them feel wanted. I could see the baby and I would be going places together. Christmas can be a time of very mixed feelings, can't it? For some, great fun and happiness, for others, sadness and loneliness. The coming of Jesus that we celebrate today isn't just an anniversary from 2,000 years ago. The gifts of love and peace and hope are strength for today and a promise that Jesus will come again, not as a baby, but as a king whose kingdom will never end. And if you feel like Christmas is passing you by, take comfort from the words of Wendy Cope's carol service. You are part of the story and you are deeply loved. Happy Christmas. Those of us who are not important enough to have places reserved for us and who turned up too late to get a seat at all, stand in the nave aisles or perch on stone ledges. We shiver in the draught from the west door. We cannot see the choir, the altar or the candles. We can barely see the words on our service sheets. But we can hear the music and we can sing for the baby whose parents were not important enough to have a place reserved for them and who turned up too late to get a room at all. Mon lucky. 
Thank you to Anne Clark for her poetry and thank you for your company. If you'd like details of the music and spoken word in our praise special, you'll find them in the praise blog at manxradio.com. Music.